Hey guys, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Chris, and today I'm conducting a little bit of an experiment. Um, the other day, we did a mock or practice run of a uh, power outage, and we used the fireplace to stay warm, and that's what we typically do. Like We've, we've done several um, pretend power outages. It's something we do just for fun like sometimes it's a reward for the boy who you know he's got a good report card or something like we, we, what do you want to do to celebrate what should we do for fun it's like oh let's do a power outage <laughs> it's, like, it's like our fun thing to do uh so we did that and um things went pretty smoothly we, we've got that pretty down much pretty much down pat um but something i have is this let's see right here this portable buddy Mr. Heater and I got this um, I've probably had it for a couple years but I've only used it uh, a few times and I've only used it camping um, so it it actually does a really good job of heating a tent uh, make sure your tent is it will melt the plastic of your tent I've, I learned that the hard way um, so you definitely want to position it right and you want to make sure it's in a big enough tent where you have some clearance um, to not melt the tent, uh, definitely. Um, but it definitely heats a, a tent, no problem. I don't know how well it heats the house, um, or not the whole house. I know this little thing isn't gonna heat the entire house, but let's see if I can get us both in the frame. But I'm curious if it'll hit, heat this room as well as the fireplace does. So fireplace, we get that going, and especially when I put the plastic sheeting up, I mean, we're in t-shirts and sorry, t-shirts and shorts because it's it gets hot in here, and I typically have to open the window even to um, just for circulation and air and try to get make sure no smoke's getting in and all that. We don't want to asphyxiate. Um, so I want to see how this will do. I've got a carbon monoxide detector, um, so just to stay safe. Um, and here's the first alert, explosive gas and carbon monoxide alarm. And so what I like about it is you can just plug it in um, to either, you know, and it'll, um, it can just, you can just use it every day. Just have it hanging out, plugged in wherever. Or you can just keep it with your camping stuff and, which is kind of what I do. And, uh, you know, bring it with you, keep it in the tent. I put this by my head. Uh, and then the heater um, on the other side and so just to be on the safe side and this thing is loud it is loud you know you can test it I'm even reluctant to do it but so you get that little beep and then it goes nuts Phew. That is loud. so I am definitely not sleeping through that that's for sure so it's testing for yeah whatever it does the uh, CO2 sorry CO, carbon monoxide not CO2 um, CO1 I guess so yeah um, if you're gonna get one of those heaters I do recommend something like this it was around 50 bucks I think um, this certainly I'm not endorsing this brand or anything this is just the one that I got um, so do whatever makes sense to you, what to keep you safe. But I, I definitely recommend something just to just to be sure. You never know. You don't want to die in your sleep trying to stay warm. You know, the, a completely preventable death. It got down to nine degrees. Now that is Celsius. Um, so that's probably going to be um, let's see, nine degrees Celsius. I don't know exactly what that is, but that's probably like in the forties. Um, and so now it's only been on for. 15 minutes maybe and we're up to 11 degrees so um, I'd say that's that's pretty good so far for just a few minutes being on and this has just been sitting in the box for a couple years let me tell you about it a little bit so this is the whoops this is the mr. heater portable buddy it's an indoor safe propane heater it takes these little canisters 
uh, these, these Coleman canisters. There's also an extension hose you can buy so that if you have a like a big propane tank, you can use it for that. Um, it's got a fold down handle, swivel out regulator for easy fuel connection. Um, it's got two different heat settings. What else does it say here? Um, temporary heat for workshops, work size porches, blah, 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 blah. But the important part to me was that it's indoor safe. What I also like about it is if you look at the back, there's um, these like these holes here. So you could actually mount this on a wall if you wanted to. Um, so I think that's pretty nice. Like they said, this swivels out to make it easier to connect. Um, the handle falls down, which I mean, I don't know how much of a selling point that is. <laughs> um, it's quite warm here. Like that's hot. I don't, I definitely don't want to put my hand any closer than that. Sorry, I don't know how good of a job I'm doing filming. Uh, we've got two different settings, low and high. There's also a pilot setting. It does take a little bit of work. I've noticed uh, both times, or not both times, I've used this a few times, like I said, but every time I've used this, it seems like it takes a little while to get it going. I have to really hit that pilot several times before it actually lights, but that's not a big deal. Um, it, it's not very heavy, doesn't take up a whole lot of space, and overall, I'd say I like it. Uh, I definitely liked it in my tent. Um, you know, I don't know that I'd really want to, like, I don't want to hike anywhere carrying this necessary, necessarily. Uh, you can get a bag for it. Um, let's see if I get it in frame, both of us in frame again. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Uh, so you can get a bag for it or a little tote or whatever that'll make it a little bit easier to carry. I don't know if I'd actually want to do that. Um, because it's not so much that this is so heavy, but carrying the canisters along with it could be problematic because the canisters, they don't last all that long. Um, I'm trying to remember mm, how long did it last on high? I, I honestly, I don't remember. And this canister wasn't brand new, so it wasn't completely full. It was almost full, but, but not completely. So we'll just, maybe I'll just run this out and see how long it lasts. I won't record the whole thing because that would be terribly boring just to sit here and <laughs> watch to see how long the canister lasts. But I think I, I ran it almost all night long with the last time I went camping with it. And... Um, I probably had it on the low setting or maybe I bounced back and forth on from low to high just depending trying to get comfortable and I think I had to change the canister once overnight so um, and I think that's why this canister is was only like partially full um, is because I think it one canister went all night and then I used a little bit of another one so you will have to carry at least say what at least two minimum if you're planning on spending the whole night and have running it the whole time um so to me the canisters are more the issue more so than this because by itself it is pretty light but depending on how long you're going to be camping you you may need a lot of those um mm. Uh, but I think it's great for power outages. I great, think it's great if you're going to be doing some car camping in the winter and you don't really, you're not really trying to rough it necessarily. Um, maybe you're trying to take baby steps into winter camping and, you know, testing out gear. You, you know, I don't, I, I don't see any reason. I don't consider this cheating. I don't consider anything wrong with taking baby steps. So if you want to pack what you have uh, and try to like test out your gear to see how it works for winter, to me, doing a car camping situation is ideal and that's exactly what we did we did some winter car camping um and we brought this and so we had our sleeping bags and everything and i think at first i tried you know let's let's just not have it on let's see how we do and our tent is not a all season tent um, it actually wasn't even that cold but we were chilly not we weren't comfortable i don't think we would have died of hypothermia but we weren't comfortable and i wanted to test this out anyway um, so to me, that's a great approach. Take your gear, take it out there, see how it is. And then if you find out that you're too cold, turn this bad boy on. And then you don't have to die out there. You don't have to cancel your trip. You don't have to be miserable. But now you know where you need to improve your gear. You may need, um, you know, a better tent. You may need a better sleeping bag, you know, whatever the case may be. 
Now you know. Test your stuff out. That's And this is, in my opinion, a great way to safely test out your winter gear if you're not sure that you're ready yet and without having to cancel your trip. Because this, I mean, we were fine. Once we turned that on, we, we were not cold at all. It was all good. Um, so yeah, and let's see where we're at now. Oh, it's still at 11. So it's, well, it's only been like two minutes since I checked it last. Um, so overall, I do enjoy this thing. I definitely recommend when, when I use this camping, um, I have a battery powered, I think it's called like a five in one tester. So it, it detects smoke, it detects carbon monoxide and also, uh, like combustible gases. And it takes a nine volt battery. You can also plug it in. And so I take that with me and that just sits in the tent. And I usually have this on one side of the tent and then I put the um, detector um, by our heads just on the ground you know right to next to where we're sleeping and I use this with the big tent and um, and that way it's just a little extra safety precaution you know I don't want to you know get carbon monoxide while I'm sleeping or whatever but I just feel a little bit safer doing that so I do recommend that they're a bit on the pricey side I think mine was around 50 60 bucks um, but as uh, they say, it's cheaper than a funeral. <laughs> and and there was two, three of us if you count the dog. <laughs> so cheaper than three funerals. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's my thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to try to review a few more of my products that I have that I've tested out and that I can actually recommend. Um, but this is one of them. So power outages, winter camping, experimenting, or even if you're like just ice fishing or just doing something outdoors, working in your garage, I don't think this is a bad way to go at all. And those canisters are, are cheap. You know, you can get them almost everywhere and they last a really long time. I've read that you're not supposed to store them in the house um, for safety reasons. So that part is a little bit problematic for me. I don't have like a good place to store them. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is, is build a shed this summer or something to store these guys so I can stock up on them. And that could be a fun little project. So that's just a little something to keep in mind, you know, where are you going to store these canisters? Uh, another thing about the canisters, if you're not familiar with these Coleman canisters, a lot of different, um, devices and appliances take those things. So, um, and so it's really nice if you can get some cross compatibility. So I have a stove. Uh, there's lanterns. I don't have a lantern, but I know they make lanterns that take those little propane tanks. Um, but I definitely have like a little cooking stove that I can use that takes that same tank. So you could potentially buy a bunch of those and use a bunch of different appliances with it. So you could have your heater, your cooking, your lights, uh, all with that same canister. And I definitely like that aspect of things, cross compatibility. You don't have to have a bunch of different things. All right, let's keep this short. Uh, I will keep this running for a while and uh, we'll see how high that temperature goes and how long it takes for this thing to run out. But I'm nice and cozy now, sitting right next to it actually, but my face is getting hot. All right, so we're back here and um, it's been, it's been about three hours and um, I think that my Mr. Heater, Mr. Buddy, is, I don't think it has too much left. Um, it was kind of making some noise, and um, it seemed to kind of, the, the light was getting a bit more, it wasn't as bright, it was kind of faltering a bit, um, and it actually turned off. I was able to restart it and it looks like it's looks like it's going so maybe it's got some juice left um i thought that was the end uh, i did a little bit of math and it turns out nine degrees was um i think it was 48 48 point something degrees and so far i've gotten up to 15 degrees oh yeah there we go I wonder if it'll kick back on again. Let's try it. Let's do that pilot again. Oh, there's a little bit of a light. A little bit. Alright, and then you give it a minute and hold it down. I can see a little tiny light there. Yeah, but if I let it go, it dies. 
So you just kind of hold that down for a few seconds. And then you eventually could turn it to high and it should go. But yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, we went from um, 9 degrees up to 9 degrees Celsius up to 15. Not perfect. Little bit. I wanted to see how hot I could get it in here. If I could ever get like warm and toasty. Never got to that point. Um, maybe I'll try it again with a smaller room and see if the results are different there. I may do that. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Toodles.